In this video, I want to solve a nonlinear system of equations, but I want to show, show you what it looks like if you have an inconsistent system. So notice here, we have the equation x squared minus y squared equals 4, which is actually a hyperbola uh, that you see here on the screen. And then also the equation y equals x squared, that's your standard parabola, which you can see right here. So if you graph these things to scale, we, we can very well see that there is no point on the green parabola and the yellow hyperbola. So this should be an example of an inconsistent system. We can see that geometrically very simply, but how would you detect that algebraically? As we try to solve systems of linear equations earlier in this lecture series, we often would get things like zero equals seven, which of course is a contradiction, which would indicate you have an inconsistent system. That thing is, is still present, right? Um, if, you get an in, if you get a contradiction, that means you're not going to have a solution in that regard, right? But another thing that can show up with these nonlinear systems, it could be that there's no contradictions that emerge, but it could, it could, the, the situation could be that there's no real solutions. If you have to solve an equation that has no real solutions, that also would indicate inconsistency. So let me show you how we could do that one here. And I'm going to solve this. You could do it by substitution. You could just substitute y equals x squared right here. That would give you the equation x squared minus x to the fourth equals four. This would be the substitution approach. Um, that does require we solve a degree four polynomial. It's by no means, I mean, it's something we definitely could do. It's not horrible. But I actually think elimination works out a little bit better on this one. Uh, because if we take the hyperbola, x squared minus y squared equals four, and we compare that with the parabola, which I'm gonna times the parabola by negative one. Uh, let's do a little bit of massage into it first. Let's move the y to the other side. So we get x squared minus y equals zero, and then times that by negative one, negative one on both sides. You're gonna get negative x squared plus y equals zero. Let's add those together so that the x squareds cancel and we end up with a negative y squared plus y equals four. Let's just move these friends to the other side of the equation. You get zero equals y squared minus y plus four. And so as you try to factor this, you're like, okay, factors of two that add to be negative one. Um, you'd have to take negative one, negative four, which is negative five, that doesn't work. Negative two, negative two is negative four, that doesn't work. Okay, I'll use the quadratic formula. So we kind of sing pop goes the weasel on our head here y equals negative b plus or minus the square root. Now you go through the song there, you're gonna get a plus one plus or minus the square root of negative one squared minus four times one times four all over two, right? Simplifying this thing here, you're gonna get one plus or minus the square root of negative 15 over two. And so this is, this is the, this is the point right here. Notice our discriminant turned out to be negative 15, that's less than zero. That tells us there are no real solutions. So there are no real numbers. There are no real numbers that'll make this intersection happen. If I wanna graph this thing with complex variables, then we'll get intersections. But for the real number system, these things don't intersect. And that's what we mean here by inconsistent because what does inconsistent mean? Inconsistent means there's no solution. And in this context, that means there's no real solution. So if you have to solve quadratic equations with negative discriminants, that's gonna indica indicate to you that you have no real intersections between your curves.